Moran. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Uh, panel, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I, want, I have two questions. One is, uh, is narrow and one is broad. And I'll start with the narrow one. Uh, and I want to direct it at Dr. Atkinson. Uh, doctor, you have been uh, valuable to us uh, in many of our efforts in regard to uh, trying to increase upward mobility in the economy uh, for individuals, but particularly in regard to legislation introduced now a number of years ago, Startup, now Startup 3.0. One of the components of that legislation is, is trying to uh, enhance the opportunities to commercialize federally funded research to get it further into the economy and to help startup entrepreneurs have access to the the value of research that they have helped fund. And I would welcome your thoughts about that and its pl a proper place of in, in the Competes Act uh, as an opportunity for us to advance this cause. Oh, well, thank you, Senator. Thank you. Uh, you know, I think it's, it's interesting when you look at that, uh, that, first of all, fully support that, that idea and that proposal and Startup Act in general. It's taking a very, very small amount of money, I think it's 0.15 percent, as I recall, out of the entire enterprise and saying, you know, if we take a little bit of money and focus it on getting this knowledge commercialized in the U.S., to me that's a very, very wise investment. Uh, not just because it would get more commercialization, uh, but it would end up creating a more positive ecosystem. We'd have a bigger economy so we could fund more science. We'd have industry more focused on these things so they would be funding more university research. So I think the folks who are looking at that maybe with some trepidation of saying, well, we have a fixed pie and we don't want to lose our little slice are looking at it in a too narrow and, and, and uh, not, not, not the right way, because I think a program like that would end up with commercializing a lot more innovation and fundamentally creating more science. Thank you. We're, we're working with um, the centers uh, on this committee to see if we can include uh, that language or similar language in, in competes. On the broad question to any of you who would like to respond, uh, I think the question is, is all federal research of equal value or priority? And I, I know the answer to that can't be yes, uh, but also probably politically it can't be no. But here's, here's what I'm thinking. I, I've been involved in, as a member of the Appropriations uh, Committee uh, in regard to significant increases in NIH funding. Uh, I now chair the Agricultural Appropriations Subcommittee where there's a concerted effort to see if we can't increase the number of dollars available for agricultural research. Um, we're talking about other research today in this setting, but as I, as a member of Congress, try to prioritize where do we put the resources uh, within the wide array of federally funded research, how should I look at uh, where those priorities ought to be? So th the question again is, is there a way to distinguish that certain kinds of research federally supported has a better bang for the buck, greater value to the country, its economy, and its people. I start. I, so I've, I know that uh, the sort of consensus in the academic community is that it's all equal and they shouldn't allow any, any prioritization. The prioritization should, should come from principal investigators. And I don't really believe that, uh, nor do I believe the opposite, that the federal government should be micromanaging and picking everything. You need a healthy mix of that. But I do think that there is one good criteria that we could use, and that's a report we released on Monday about how, why we need a national productivity strategy. U.S. productivity over the last seven years has been the lowest it's been since World War II. And I think there's a set of technologies, including in agriculture, uh, including in biotechnology, including in robotics and in artificial intelligence and other areas. We know these technologies are going to be critical to boosting U.S. productivity. And I don't see any reason why we couldn't say we're going to take a, you know, a little bit more focus into these areas. Again, it's not to say that you abolish uh, me meteorology or anything like that. I'm not saying that by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> but I am saying, though, that we do know that there are some areas of research that are going to have a bigger economic impact, and I think it is worth expanding those in particular. Thank you. I think it was, it was recognized several years ago that we as a nation don't really have a a science of science policy. We make science policy sort of as we go. And so NSF has a pro pro program called SICEP, the Science of Science and Innovation Policy. We're actually studying this to, to really find out what, what to, really the answer to your question. I think one of the answers, though, right now is better coordination. The National Science Technology Council, which is a federal agency uh, a committee that basically is across all of government, across all agencies. For example, you look at USDA and things like food safety, there's a lot of basic research in biology that NSF funds that's super relevant to food safety and USDA. So 
So then the question is, well, do you need to have it funded four or five different places, or are we properly coordinating our investments? So I think I would say let's take what we have and make sure that we're coordinating it most effectively and having crosstalk across the agencies of the bio directorate and NSF talking with USDA, which I know they are, to make sure that we're really thinking holistically about these problems, as well as a social behavioral dimension of how people are responding to genetically modified foods and things like that. I think that, that broad sort of ecosystem is, is really the thing that we have to get our hands around. It's very complicated. It's difficult to do. Uh, doctor, thank you. That's useful to me. I mean, our subcommittee has jurisdiction over both USDA and the Food and Drug Administration. The question very well may be one that we ought to look at uh, in, in that regard. And just finally, Dr. Wing, uh, I met with the CEO of Microsoft recently. Uh, I very much appreciate the efforts at, uh, that, that Microsoft is making to, uh, to train, educate, to encourage the training and education of uh, folks in science and engineering and computer science in particular. And uh, we want to be an ally in that regard. So thank you very much.